that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And that Son, Jesus, is God, and God is Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? For the fact is that we have a Savior, and that Savior is God. We have a God that came down. We have a God that created us. And that Creator came down in the Son. 100% man, 100% God, suffered and died and buried. Today, St. Patrick's Day, and St. Patrick's Day is not a day of green, it's not a green day of Irish. The true St. Patrick was a Christian, a true Bible-believing Christian that believed that God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. Now, St. Patrick's Day has been Catholicized. It has been perverted as most things get perverted, as most things will break down. And yet St. Patrick himself would do and had done what we're doing today, preaching the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The means of St. Patrick was for people to be saved. Outside the fact about St. Patrick's Day is Jesus' day. Every day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. For there is no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. There is no salvation in Catholicism. There is no salvation in Baptism. There is no salvation in any religion. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in, whosoever believeth in the Son, Whosoever believes in the Son, whosoever believeth the love of God that Jesus Christ came, whosoever believeth in the Son, John 3, 16, Jesus, I am the way. There is no means of salvation outside of Jesus Christ, the deity of Jesus Christ, Jesus, the Lord God of all. God in the Son, the Son in God. Thomas said, my Lord, my God, to the one that had the holes in his hands, that had the hole in his side, and the holes in the feet, and the marks of the brutality of the chastisement of mankind. Not the chastisement, not the brutality of the guiltiness of Jesus, for Jesus is sinless. Jesus was proper and perfect. Jesus is God by his holiness, by his righteousness. That holiness, that righteousness is what man needs to get to God. There is no holiness in man, for the Bible says there is none that doeth good. There are none righteous. There is none that seek after God. Well, that leaves us out. That leaves us come short. That leaves us with a gap between us and God that nothing can fill that gap. Religion cannot meet our means to God. Science cannot meet our means to God. Unbelief cannot meet our means to a God that's not believe, and yet the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God, and to meet thy God would be to meet Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is able, and Jesus Christ will save your soul. Uh, by his finished work. We're not prepared for the tribulation period. We're prepared for Christ's return for his bride. And if you are not on Christ,
my side by the blood atonement of Jesus Christ, you'll be found left behind. And if you were to die before Jesus Christ comes, you would wake up in a place called hell. There is a hell. Jesus spoke about hell in the King James Bible. Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven. He said it'd be better for you to cut off your leg than to be walking maim in hell for all eternity. He said it'd be better to pluck your eyeball out rather than go into hell. He said, straight is the gate that leadeth to life, but broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. In John chapter 3, he that believes on the Son, capital S, has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son, capital S, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The wrath of God is hell that burns forever. Let me read to you out of Luke 16. Notice, people, I am quoting and opening a Bible and not a magazine. I am not opening a missile. I am not reading what man has written. I am reading to you from the Bible. I am reading the words of God through the Holy Spirit. And it says in Luke 16, red letter in this Bible. Now, red letter in this Bible is what Jesus said. It's a wonderful thing to have a red letter Bible. Red letter Bible say, hey, this is what Jesus said. Black letters, this is what man said. So, shall we start right at the beginning? I think so. I would hate to take anything out of context. But the Bible says in Luke 16, verse 19, there was a certain rich man that was, which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. That's no point for us right now. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. Not really not importance here. And desiring to be fed with the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. It was carried by the angels in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and buried. Oh, I got the cops here. And in hell, wait a minute, the rich man also died and was buried in hell. In hell! Jesus said, red letter, that rich man is in hell. That rich man is in hell by the words of Jesus. And he's never given a name in Luke 16. You may have a name or a title here on this earth, but you will not ever have a name or a title in hell. You're just a rich man. And your entire life is brought upon a tile. You are a poor man. Hear this story. A poor man goes off to Abraham's bosom. We know his name, Lazarus. We know that the Bible speaks about those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall be given a new name. This man in hell has no name at all. None. Ever. Ever. In hell, by the red letter of Jesus Christ, will you ever have a name? And yet the Bible says those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read it, Revelation chapter 20. Out of the Bible. Let's have an open Bible. Open Bible. Revelation 20, and we'll see the contrast. And I can't turn this page right now. Revelation 20, verse 15. 
And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, there are people that go into hell with no name, and there's a book called the Lamb's Book of Life, and if your name is in that book, you're saved. And the thing that we learn from this study is the fact is, if you are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, God knows your name. God knows who you are. And if you were to die and go into hell, there is no name. You are unknown by God. And when you come to the final judgment, the great white throne judgment, that book will be open. And if your name is absent from that book, you will not go to a place called heaven, but you will go into from hell into the lake of fire that burneth forever and ever. There is no hope. There is no hope when you don't believe on Jesus. And I'm telling you, there are no Catholics in heaven. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are those that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, who is God. You cannot be saved by a non-God Jesus when Paul tells us in the book of Corinthians that there is another Jesus. There is another gospel. There is another spirit. And with that other Jesus, that other spirit, that other gospel, you're not saved. Now, I don't know much about that rich man. The Bible tells us nothing. But he had to believe in something else. He had to thought another way. He had to do something other than what God prescribed. And the Bible says to Jesus says, red letter, John, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him obtains eternal life. That Son, that Jesus had to be sent by God. That Jesus has to be Jewish born of the Virgin. We know her name is Mary. The biblical Jesus was born in Bethlehem and died upon Calvary's cross. And guess what, folks? Here's a doctrine that will spill your beans. Jesus suffered and died and went into hell to deposit our sins. And preached, the Bible says, to those that were captive and walked across that gulf because he had a meeting with a person that died right next to him on the cross. He says, I will meet you today and I will bring you to paradise. But he had to deposit himself into hell first. The Bring our sins. And when you got people that preach against Jesus, they preach the wrong gospel. That's not the means that's going to save you. Here is the open Bible. Here is the proof right here in my hands that I open and read to you every week from the Bible. The Holy Bible. The King James Version of the Bible. I'll give you book, chapter, and verse and your argument will be with the Holy Spirit and the Bible says that Jesus alone saves the Bible says that Jesus alone is the authority is the means is God approved for your salvation there is nothing else and I've got to kick the religions I've got to kick science. I've got to kick the Easter Bunny because they're not going to do anything for you in eternity. And the eternity is relied upon what you do with Jesus. The Bible says, what must I do to be saved? Acts 16.30. 
And the answer is Acts 1631. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now people, I grew up as a Roman Catholic. Catholic, I am a sure of authority by being a member of that church will set you off into hell by eating Jesus, by drinking Jesus, by praying this prayer, by having the beads. They're not going to help you. They're not going to take care of you. You will have no full of assurance of anything and you would be found in hell for all eternity burning burning in a hell that burneth forever according to the scriptures. For Jesus alone saves and only Jesus saves. There is no means of salvation in any other. But the fact is that Jesus saves. And Jesus alone. And that the word of God strives forever. Jesus said my words Heaven and, earth, or heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Religions will go away, but the word of God will be preached. Jesus will be exalted. The Bible will be heard. The Bible will be honored, for the Bible is God and Jesus Christ. If I may turn to John chapter 1. Like, who's going to stop me from turning to John chapter 1? John chapter 1. This is why. This is why I preach the Bible. And preach the Jesus of the Bible. John chapter 1. In the beginning. Does that sound familiar? That was over there in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Oh, oh, the Word was God. The Word was God. The Word was with God. The Word is included with God. And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. There goes evolution out the window. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Hawkins did not believe this God. And unless he called upon Jesus Christ as his Savior, he now knows today, if he's an unbeliever, I don't know. But if he is an unbeliever, as with all unbelievers, after their death, they know that there's a God. When you die, you will find out that there is a God. When you die, you'll find out that the Bible's correct. When you die, you will know that there is a heaven or there is a hell. And what you do with Jesus Christ will determine your heaven or your hell. And you got to do that before you die. Because there is no salvation in anything else but Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. Nothing else can do it. See, once you die, that's it. You can't come back. You cannot sit in a graveyard right now and see someone come out and say, Hey, I got to get right. You call that a zombie, and there's no zombies. The Bible says that there is a death. The wages of sin is death. But that verse is not done in Romans 6.23. That verse said the wages of sin is death. But, 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 the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Catholics do not believe Jesus is the Lord. We can get by Jesus through Mary. And that's anti-Bible. That's against the scriptures. As a matter of fact, 
Mary said to the people, whatever my son saith, do. That's Mary's command. And you haven't read Luke chapter 1, and we'll turn to Luke chapter 1. We'll just open our Bible today and read the Scriptures. Uh, Luke chapter 2, excuse me. And I'm having a hard time. Oh, hold on. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Oh, Luke chapter 1. Wait a minute. The words of Mary. I'm looking. John. It is Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Okay. Luke chapter 1. The Gospel of Luke chapter 1. Verse 46. And Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Mary said about that baby that's in her womb, Jesus, that is God my Savior. Well, that's interesting. Because there's all kinds of religions out there, there's all kinds of science out there that proclaim that Jesus is not God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Proclaim that that baby in her womb was God the Savior. God said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, the Son, has everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. Well, now let's let's open this. John, chapter fourteen. I would hate to have you think that I'm just messing around with you. John fourteen six. John fourteen six. Jesus said unto him, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father Except by me. Guy over there is passing out, Chad. The Bible said that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's red letter. That is the words of Jesus. So when you think you can get to the Father by a man, it better be the man, Christ Jesus. Listen, we got an open Bible here. And I'm going to say to you, let's go Bible at Bible, what you have and what I have being the authority, the King James Bible. And if you run away from the Bible, we know where you stand. I stand upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ. The Bible, Jesus. And there is a difference. 
And there is going to be a sad time according to the scriptures. And it's a sorry scripture. It's a very sorry scripture. And I'm sorry I can't open to that place in the Bible, but a concordance. It should have that written down. My error. See, I'm a human. I err. I'm a human. I'm a sinner. I'm a human. I need Jesus Christ to wash away my sins. And that's how I'm not going to hell by Jesus Christ. But the Bible says the words of Jesus Christ. The people will say to him that day, Lord, didn't we not have you in our presence? Lord, didn't we not feast with you? Did we not walk with you? And Jesus will proclaim, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And that moment, that time at the great white throne judgment, when God will proclaim to you, I never knew you. But God, wasn't I baptized? Depart from me, I never knew you. God, didn't I belong to this church? Depart from me, I never knew you, ye workers of iniquity. God, I gave money. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But God, 33 to 33 degrees and up to the right and left. And yet God will proclaim the part for me the workers of iniquity. When we read the Gospel of Luke 16, God did not know that rich man that went into hell. In order to go to heaven, you've got to be known by God. God has to know you to get to heaven. And the only way God's going to get to know you is by the finished work of the gospel of His Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered and died according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the only way God's going to get to know you is through the finished work of Jesus Christ, not your works. At least any man should boast. Your means of salvation rests upon Jesus Christ, God, 100% man, 100% God, to be saved. That's how you're known by God. When your name is written down in that Lamb's book of life, the Lamb. Shall I quote from John chapter 1? The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. The Lamb's book of life, it belongs to Jesus. Salvation belongs to Jesus. God don't care what church you attended. God doesn't care about where you wrote that check. And God really doesn't care what you believe unless, unless it's upon His Son, upon the merits of His Son, upon the gospel of His Son, that Jesus died according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Right here in my hand. I don't have pamphlets. I've got the scriptures. I've got booklets with scripture from the King James Bible on how to be saved. The Bible. The Bible. The Bible. Right here. And explains to you by the scriptures, not man's word, 
what you must do to be saved. It is God given that you must believe on Jesus Christ to be saved, and yet it's your free will. And it's the United States government that gives me the freedom to preach the gospel. Jesus can save your soul today if you're to put your faith and belief from your heart and acknowledge your sins and to put your faith and trust upon Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. This is the gospel that's preached worldwide. And yet, man has changed it, and yet, from the Bible, from the King James Bible, it has not been changed. It's a message not preached in churches. Many people are going to wake up and go to church tomorrow morning, Lord willing. And they're not going to have the gospel presented to them. They're going to have Satan's words, Satan's ministers of 1 Corinthians 11 or 2 Corinthians 11. And yet, rest assured, in the Bible, in the Bible, I'm looking up here. Looking in the Bible. Man, my Bible's falling apart here. Hold on. Technical difficulties of my Bible falling apart. Technical difficulties. We'll be right with you. God, oh. I'm looking so I want to quote right away. I quote it, but I want you to know. Alright, it's in Corinthians. I know where it is in my other Bible. Well, let's look at here. First Corinthians. Chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'll start at 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. But I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's Christians. You're not saved. That's not you. So when the corruptible shall be put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The wages of sin is death. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Salvation rests upon Jesus. And yet the Bible speaks about another Jesus. And yet the Jesus of the Bible, the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's remarkable. It's by the scriptures. And they're trying to find. I'm having a 
hard time turning my pages here. also received. I can say that personally, but Paul writing. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he was seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. And after that, he was seen above 500 brethren. The resurrected body of Jesus Christ was seen by over 512 people. No one's ever seen anybody else come out of the graveyard and live forever except Jesus. Lazarus rose from the graveyard, but he went back to the graveyard. Jesus is not ever going back to the graveyard because he has gotten the victory over sin and death and hell. You can't do it. Why can't you do it? Because Jesus said, I am the way, there is no other way. Jesus said, I am the truth, there is no other truth. And Jesus said, I am the life, there is no other life. There is no way, there's no truth, and there's no life outside of Jesus Christ. When anybody comes up with another gospel, the Bible declares them as false, false teachers. And by the Bible, we're to rebuke them. Bible authority. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 8, I believe. This page will turn. Galatians 1.8, I believe. Yep. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let them be accursed. When they are not teaching and preaching the gospel, biblical Jesus, Paul said in the book of Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, they are accursed. When somebody comes and has another Jesus, I will read to you again, Galatians 1, 8, Unless you believe with them. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. What is the gospel that Paul preached? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Can I safely say trillions of men have died 
and gone into a graveyard. Uh, can I say safely trillions? And none of them have come out of the graveyard. But Jesus only. So if trillions of men have gone into the graveyard and have not come out, one man has gone into the graveyard according to the scriptures and has come out of that graveyard according to the scriptures with over 412 men that witnessed that resurrected body. That has to be God. Because a trillion other men have not come out of the graveyard. How do you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? He is not in his burying place. And according to Acts chapter 1, he has ascended unto the right hand of the Father and is there today. Acts chapter 7, I believe. Acts chapter 7. Let's go there. I may have that chapter wrong. Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. 55. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Stephen says... I've seen that Jesus who died, and I see him standing alive at the right hand of the Father. Oh, death, where's your sting? And because of Jesus, because my soul is saved by the finished work of Jesus, When I die, I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And the Lord knows my name, though it's unimportant. Many of you here don't even know who I am, thank God. And that's no importance. But when God can look down from heaven and say, Daniel, the angel said, Daniel, thou art known in heaven. Abraham, you're a friend. Moses, face to face. A Bible, born again, believing Christian. I know your name. It's in my book. That's important. <clears throat> That's very important. That means your reservations are set in heaven, in blood, in Jesus' book. When you die and you get to heaven, and they open up that book, there's your name, enter down to my rest. What, billions of people on this earth today, maybe? I never counted them. Let's say billions of people. In reality, how many people know who you are? And the question is today is not who knows you? But the question is, does God know you through Jesus Christ? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your sins washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? The sacrifice accepted by God approved by God and rejected by men. And the Bible has already told that there'll be scorners. There'll be people that reject. You will not have the masses. Jesus never had a mega church. He never had a religion. When you think about, oh, where's your group of people? Jesus had 12 men. One of them was the Satan. And at his cross, when he died, there was only one of his disciples there. 
out of 12. And we look at numbers. We look at followers. Not God. God says, is your name written in the last book of life by the finished work of my son? Anything else, Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. The Bible also says, prepare to meet thy God. And you may say, I don't believe in God. And yet the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. It's kind of interesting that God will answer you according that he is real. Isn't that a wonder? Now, you may not believe in God. I've got a Bible verse. I'm opening the Bible. Psalms 53, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The Bible proclaims that atheists, atheism, According to Psalm 53, 1, you're a fool. You are a fool to think that there's no God. Jesus saves. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when you don't believe that, the Bible says in Psalm 53, verse 1, you are a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they. God looks at you in your atheism, in your unbelief, as vile, as wicked. Corroded and done abominable iniquity, and there is none good that doeth good. Psalm 53, verse 1. That verse I quote to you out of Romans is found in Isaiah 53, 1 that there is none that doeth good. And yet countless and countless people come up to us and say, oh, I'm good. And the Bible says, no, you don't do good. You don't do good at all. That was last week's message. Righteousness, doing good. We did that out of... Romans chapter 3. But in the heart of an atheist, you are a fool, and you still do not do good, so you ain't going to make it. So let's keep our fingers there. Hello. Oh, Mark, right there, so I might want to come back, but let's go over to Revelation 20. Bible! Revelation, Bible, here it is, an open book. You can get it at the dollar store. You can get it online. King James 1611 Bible. Access to any American with a smartphone and the Internet or a computer. Or you can even go to a bookstore or a library, whatever that is. And you might be able to find one there. I don't know if they take it up. But you can't find the Bible in the public school system. <gasps> don't go to your 
in public school and look for a Bible, it ain't there. Revelation 20. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, and forever and ever. That's where Satan ends up if you think Satan rules. Satan rules! Yeah, he ends up in the lake of fire where you go. In your unbelief of Jesus, you end up in the same place Satan goes. And I saw a great white throne, verse 11, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heavens fled away. There goes Mother Earth. God shows up and Mother Earth says, I'm out of here. The earth that's under a curse says, I'm out of here. Here comes God. I'm out of here. You can't save Mother Earth. When God shows up, Mother Earth takes off. She leaves you stranded. You take care of yourself before God. I'm out of here. <laughs> Don't put your trust in Mother Earth. She'll deceive you. Don't put your trust in the heavens. They say goodbye when God shows up too. Who cares about Mars and Saturn and, and the satellites and the telescopes and the scientists? Who cares? If that's your salvation... When God shows up, they take off Revelation 20. Bye. When you count your life by the stars, and Glebel, and Virgo, and all that other garbage, when God shows up, the Bible says, the earth and the heavens fled away. They're afraid of God, though you're not. The heavens and the earth cannot stand in the presence of God. Moses did. Don't put your faith and trust in Mother Earth in the heavens. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, prepare to meet thy God. I don't believe in God. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. I'm a Baptist. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. I gave money. I saw the dead and I saw the dead small and great stand before God. I'm a good person. I saw the dead small and great stand before God. I don't like your preaching. I saw the dead small and great stand before God. I got my religion, you got your religion. I saw the dead small and great stand before God. Prepare to meet thy God. Meet him on the terms of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Prepare to meet thy God. The one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me, and that's Jesus speaking, not me. John chapter 14. And the books were open. So I guess God doesn't have a computer. He opens books. Good, there's no computers in heaven. 
and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Oh! The Bible says you'll be according to your works. Judgment. There is a Bible doctrine for your works. But I have not finished the chapter yet. Let's look what happens at your works. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. And they would judge every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever, where did we see that word before, was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. He said, well, God will judge me by my works and everything I've done. And if your name is not in the Lamb's book of life, you go to the lake of fire. God records everything you're doing. And yet, if your name is not in that book of life, the Lamb's book of life, if you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, anything and everything you do will still cast you in the lake of fire because your name will be missing. Your name will not be known among God. And top it off, oh, my name's in the book of life. God says, I'll give you a new name. So the name that you're known, if you're known by God today, will be changed. That's a whole other lesson there. Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That will get your name in the Lamb's book of life. You will not be found at the great white throne judgment. Your faith and trust upon Jesus will get you if you die absent from the body and present with the Lord in heaven. You die like un if you die not in Christ, not believer, as an unbeliever, anything but Jesus, you will be buried, you'll wake up in hell. How important is hell? It's not preached among the religions. There are religions out there that there, all is well, there is no hell. And that's a lie. And there are people who come up and say, well, Jesus never preached hell. And you don't know the scriptures. Jesus was a hell fire preacher on the streets. Jesus preached on the streets. He preached on the beach about hell and about him being the only access to God. Now, I cannot say that. I cannot say for you to believe on me you can be saved. Absolutely not. But I could stand in Daytona Beach and preach to you about Jesus that you need to believe on Him to be saved. And if you don't like it, that's tough. It's in the Bible. It's in the Constitution. And you just have to grin and bear it and 
be before God one day. I hope you do it safe. And you do it against the preaching. You will be without excuse. You will have no standing before the Almighty God, Jesus Christ, forever. There is no hope without Jesus. Medicine, alcohol, drugs, they all cost you money. And if you were to step out and say, I want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, how much does it cost? The love of God. How much do I have to give the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world? No, I mean cash or check. How much? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's blood, Acts 20, 28. That's how much salvation costs. It costs the dear life of Jesus Christ, God. The sinless life of Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 28 says that blood was God's blood. Let's go there. We hate to have you think I'm just talking out. Is that Bible today? Acts 20, 28. Take heed, for, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Feed the church of God which he, goes back to God, has purchased with his, that goes back to he, which goes back to God, own blood. When did God have blood? In the veins of Jesus Christ. And I even had a Jehovah Witness tell me, yeah, Jesus Christ shed his blood. In Acts 20, 28 says that blood was God's blood. That blood, that being that suffered and died and bled on that cross, Acts 20, 28, is God. How important is that? If you got a religious Jesus, you're not saved. If you got a, I, my man Jesus upstairs, probably not saved. You gotta have the Jesus that is God and the God that is Jesus that suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures because Paul tells you there's another Jesus. That other Jesus will get Jesus to say to you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Jesus, that's not me. That's Jesus speaking. When they will proclaim a Jesus and it's not Jesus, Jesus will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's a sad shape. That's a sorry shape. That on March 17, 2018, on the streets of Daytona Beach, Florida, you have been told that you may be believing on the wrong Jesus. That's sorry. And when people preach another gospel, they must be rebuked with the Bible. I opened the Bible and showed them the scriptures. And as they will stand before Jesus, they'll be cast off. Heaven and earth will pass away, Revelation 20. But my word shall never pass away. 
When God and his word wins, he gets the credit. When are you going to break your broken heart? When are you going to dynamite that heart of stone and come to the conclusion that God is right and you are wrong? And you know what's sorry about that rich man in Luke 16? He never changes. He's never repented. He has never had a change of heart. And neither will you in hell. You'll probably, hell, <coughs> you'll probably hate God more and more than you hate Him today. And that's a fact. Many of you will not believe on Jesus because you hate God. And you'll hate him even more in hell. Because he's right. And you were wrong. And in your pride, you can't even break your pride to get right with God. It's with the heart. And the heart for many are too hard. And I stand here preaching the gospel. And the only thing that the preaching will do for you is when you stand before God, Revelation 20, you will have no excuse. When you hear the preaching of the gospel, you cannot say to God, I never knew. When you pass up the word of God on these tracks, you cannot say, God, I did not know. Many of you vendors hear us every week you hear us. You don't want to hear us. And I don't care. Because the Bible says, preach the word. One day you will meet thy God. And I hope the preaching of the gospel has brought you to kneel your heart down and to receive. And if you don't, Still prepare to meet thy God. I will meet God on Jesus Christ's terms. On the righteousness and the good works of Jesus Christ, am I only able to have access to the Father? Minus religion. Minus anything that I can do or you can do. We cannot do nothing. It's all on Jesus Christ. There is no salvation in any other but Jesus. There is no other hope except Jesus Christ. You have got to be known by God. And when anybody dies and goes to hell, the Bible says you have no name. Now you got an identity. That rich man had an identity, but he had no name. In hell, you could have the identity, I sold watermelons. That's not good enough. I was a priest. That's not good enough. I was a pastor. Not good enough. I was 67 degrees. Come up short.
the way to bridge that gap between you and God. Let me open the Bible again. I would hate to have you think I'm quoting this for myself. I wouldn't want to do that, would I? No. So it's either First Timothy or Second Timothy. chapter 2. Bible. Here's the Bible. That's what's important. This Bible is not allowed in your schools, my friend. And this is why your children are acting the way they're acting. You give them a pill, but you don't give them the Bible. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that it shall also reap. So 1 Timothy 2, I'm just trying to, verse 4, who will have all men to be saved. God says in Isaiah, come now, let us reason again. God wants to save you. He's not willing that any should perish. He's long-suffering. He wants your soul to be saved. He wants you to be in His presence. But you've got to do it by Jesus and Jesus alone. So we read in Timothy, who will have all men to be saved. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Well, uh oh, here I go again. To come unto the knowledge of the truth. So let's quote scripture again. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. We just read, who so have all men to come to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants you to come to Jesus. It's that plain and simple. It's that plain and simple. Well, I'm not done with the verse. Let's park here. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and God said, who will have all men to be saved to come unto the knowledge of the truth. According to Jesus, that's him. It's not religion. The one that said, I am the way, the truth, who have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's interesting. God wants you to have the truth. And that truth is in Jesus Christ who said, I'm the truth. Come to the knowledge of the truth, and Jesus said, I am the truth. What are you going to do with that cross-reference? Who gave himself a ransom for all. For all. God wants all to be saved, and Christ Jesus died for all. What are you going to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what God wants you to do. The Bible also says in Timothy, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. That gap between you and God today is Jesus Christ, the filler. There is no other filler. They can remove these bridges and leave us on this island as this bridge has been removed over here. This bridge here and the bridge to the south of us, they can remove. 
And you can say, if I put a camel there, I can get on the other side. That camel's not going to get you through. you got to have a bridge. You can say, well, I can walk on water. No, you can't. You'll sink. you got to have the materials and the proper use of those materials. You've got to have Jesus. And you've got to have the proper Jesus. And the proper means of salvation set off by God. Anything else is not going to do. Nothing else will do. What's wrong with the fans? They're just farming, right? So, you have to be known by God. And for God to acknowledge you, it has to be by Jesus. It has to be by the right Jesus. And again, many of you are just going about your business, think you're okay, and you're not. Some of you think, oh, I'm not even going to die. You're wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have a name right now with God. Oh, I got a name. Bill, Fred, Sam, Joe, Eric, Jason. And I will show you two places in the Bible now that you do not have a name. John 3.16, the verse that we quote every week. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's your name now, Your name before God, before Jesus Christ, is whosoever. And when God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel, whosoever is male or female, and if you don't know who you are, I guess that would fit in there too, whatever you are, that's a whosoever. Whether you're young or old, that's a whosoever. Whether you're of Ham, Japheth, or Shem, I guess that's a whosoever. But I cannot say I am preaching to Bill. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that's all of you, unless you're saved. And if you had never called on the name of Jesus, your name before God is whosoever. You don't have a name. Shall I go back to Luke 16? Luke 16. There was a certain rich man to be fed from the rich man's table. The rich man died also. There's no name in here of the man that went to hell. He's a whosoever. And yet the one that was saved, Lazarus, 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 Lazarus. Even the rich man in hell calls him out Lazarus. Probably in hell you'll know the name Jesus, but you won't like it. You'll hate it. Probably. But 
when Jesus tells us to go in all the world and preach the gospel, and we're all famous of John 3.16, it says, whosoever. There's another place in the Bible, whosoever, without a name. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Uh, again, I, I'm sorry. I can't turn these pages today for some reason. Revelation 20. Revelation 20, verse 15. It's almost a 16. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. People, you go from the preaching of Jesus Christ and the gospel from whosoever. And if you never put your faith and trust in Jesus at the great white throne judgment, you are still a whosoever. You are unnamed by God. Again, Christians who believe on Jesus, we have a name, and the Bible says we're going to get a new name. So if you don't like your name, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and when you get to heaven, you get a new one. No court costs, no lawyers. Hey, if you get saved because I don't like my name, it's better than not getting saved. The reason why I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved is I didn't want to go to hell. I'm glad a Jehovah Witness never came up to me. I'm glad a hellfire preacher with a King James Bible came up to me and explained to me what I'm explaining to you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. There is no other means. You can have your eternal life with a name written down by God or you can be given a title and no name in the lake of fire with burning forever. It's your choice. I'm doing what God has told me to do. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Mark 16. Would you like to hear that from the Bible? Alright. Mark 16. Well, I would hate to think that I, 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 I'm giving you my own words today. Mark 16. Mark 16. And the words are red. Wow. Red letter Bible. The words of Jesus in red. Mark 16, 15. It says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> it doesn't even give you a name. It calls you a creature. In your lost Stay. God calls you a creature. He calls you a whosoever. Now, if you're wondering just by chance, for free, I got a pamphlet here that says why I preach on the streets. Why are you doing it? Right here. Come up. I'll give you this to show you why we preach on the streets. You say, oh, I want to be saved. Come on up and I'll show you how to be saved. We'll have an open Bible. But the Bible calls you in your lost state a creature. Scripture. Whosoever. Scripture. Whosoever. Scripture. Hell. Scripture. What 
what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Scripture, there it is, written down. Take a picture of it. Smart plan it right there. With my smiling wife right there. Take a picture of it. Put it on your Facebook. Why not? There's another joke on Facebook. Put God in the scripture on Facebook. You wouldn't like my Facebook. It's all about God. Even Christians don't like my Facebook. It's all up to God the glory through Jesus Christ, the Son. <clears throat> There's nothing else to be safe. There is nothing else to be holy. There is nothing else to be approved by God except Jesus Christ. Nothing. And if you are not saved today, you are not okay. You are not doing well. Because death is coming and it may be today. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you will have all eternity away from Jesus Christ. In torment, Luke 16. Red letter. There is no other hope than that which is in Jesus and forever Jesus. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. And the Bible says in Proverbs 1, there'll be scorners, there'll be fools, and yet there are some that will believe. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Get yourself a name in all the important books ever. All the books are important enough. The King James Bible, number one. Number two, the last book of life where you can have your name in it. And you can be saved. 